Okay, and we are live. Um, I'm getting echoed. Someone needs to t turn off their microphone and speaker. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's get started with the uh, June edition of our monthly community hangout. Thanks everybody for stopping by. Um, I wanted this to be a, I guess, a special uh, edition uh, focused on working groups, what they are, why we're doing them, and kind of what the first ones are that we're looking to, to kick off. And we can kind of, um, as we, after we introduce the subject, we can kind of go around and see uh, which ones we're, we're starting and which ones um, you guys would like to uh, participate in and, and be a part of. Uh, we'll, we'll basically have a kind of an open call for participation uh, and then we'll, uh, and then we'll get going. Um, before we get into working groups, let's uh, have some more general updates. Uh, I'm happy to say that, and I can't, uh, I don't want to, I don't want to give away too much and give a date, but we've got a couple of things going on that are going to show up uh, relatively soon. And by that, I mean the summer. Uh, one is we have a, a discourse-based discussion forum that is in progress. Looks like we're finally going to be able to push that live, uh, hopefully next month. Um, but that that is uh, currently underway. And the other thing that's exciting is that it looks like we're going to have the ability to publish uh, for public consumption uh, metrics about uh, different uh, community health or aspects of community health. And if uh, I don't want to put anyone on the spot, but if somebody who's working that wants to share, they're, they're certainly welcome to. Um, but those are big things, and i um, looking forward to sharing more about them later. Uh, before we move along, does anybody, want, does anybody have anything they want to add to the agenda or say uh, about any of the above? Nope, seems like we're all pretty, pretty satisfied. Okay, all right, excellent. Um, so that's that. So let's go into working groups, which is kind of the main topic of discussion anyway. Um, I'm going to, can everybody see my screen? Yes. yes. Okay, great. So <clears throat> for those of you who have been following along and for those of you who have not, um, we, are, we are looking at different ways to divvy up tasks and initiatives into, um, I guess, bite-sized chunks uh, that give us a better chance to kind of uh, organize uh, and put uh, things together in a way that uh, is collaborative for the community, fun to work on, and can actually show real results in a relatively quick time. So this is a well-known concept and has been repeated in a lot of other community groups. The uh, what we're taking as working groups is based uh, on a couple of different instances. There, uh, there's some of it is based on uh, what happens in the uh, CentOS uh, special interest groups, and then there are other uh, working group examples as well. Uh, Kubernetes uh, is renowned for breaking uh, jobs into um, chunks for working groups to tackle. And they have a lot of different working groups uh, working on different things. In our case, you know, because we're not just a technical community, we're going to have both technical and non-technical working groups. Um, some working groups are going to be specifically focused around, you know, the developer experience. Some are going to be specifically focused around the, um, the user, end user experience. And by end user, I'm talking about operators, uh, DevOps practitioners deploying and maintaining OpenEdX instances. And then we're going to talk about end users in the form of instructional designers and educators and those who actually you know, use the platform. So the, the, the idea is relatively simple. Um, we just have to have, uh, create a way to manage it. And so I'm looking at kind of an additional, uh, an initial leadership group that can help to launch and eventually turn over the management of the working groups to a governing body to be named later. But for now, we've got you know, kind of the usual suspects of people that, uh, that are leaders in the community. And so we're going to, to help get this thing uh, off the ground. Um, you can see like the, the general page that explains the guidelines and the purpose for working groups and kind of the requirements. Um, one of the things we want to have is, you know, it, we want it to be open so that anyone can start a working group, but you know, you have to do a bit of homework. Um, you need to create the channels of communication. You need to be explicit about those. You need to be explicit about who's the leadership team, who's the main point of contact. Uh, all, um, all meetings need to be public. Uh, you know, there, there has to be 
a set of minimum requirements you meet in order to be you know, an officially designated working group that you know, we support and help promote and all that stuff. Right now, everything is starting off as an incubating working group. And we can talk later about what it would mean to graduate from incubating to, uh, you know, uh, I guess, full or top line working group. Um, so that's TBD. But right now, we, in order to just get this stuff launched and get it off the ground, um, let's consider everything incubating. And then we can talk about how we move in a progression from incubating to, to not. Um, so does everybody, uh, is everybody clear on that? Does anybody have any questions to start off with about why we're doing this or what our purpose is and that sort of thing? What's on the point four requirement? All code produced within the working group must be compatible with the lab process previously used by Philip. What is that? <laughs> yeah, so, so the OpenEdX platform is, you know, the, it's uh, the AGPL, the AFIRO General Public License version yeah. three. Um, it has some specific requirements around, you know, if you if you edit the code, then you need to uh, publish those publicly in, in a comparable license. Uh, there are exceptions to that. For example, uh, a lot of our APIs are covered by the Apache license version two, which mm -hmm. has less strict uh, requirements. The, the point of that is you can't take uh, the code, release it under a license that's incompatible with, um, you know, how the rest of the OpenEdX platform is published. Uh, and if you want to have specific pointers on that, we can um, we can designate a time to actually have that discussion. I think, yeah. um, but it's important to know that you can't violate the license. I think is the uh, is point number one. So that's the that's the purpose there. Okay. Um, any other questions? Again, the, the intent of this is to facilitate collaboration, uh, ensure transparency, and to make sure that, you know, as a community, we're able to move forward and do lots of uh, fun and interesting things that, you know, build on the momentum that we already have. Uh, a lot of it is also designed to uh, bring in, I guess, groups that in the past have not been, um, that we haven't traditionally paid attention to. Uh, for example, instructional designers, you're gonna see a working group specific around that. And it's very important to me that we uh, diversify the community and get uh, a variety of groups involved that maybe haven't been in the past. So that's, um, that's going to be uh, another part of the uh, overall initiative. Do we have any instructional designers on the call? I'm curious. <clears throat> So, so Jam, um, yeah. in the room here with me at edX, we actually have two visitors from the University of Montreal. Excellent. Um, Robert is here who just asked about the licensing question. And, ah, excellent. And Vincent is also here as an instructional designer. Fantastic. Welcome. I'm glad to hear it. So have you already like uh, recruited him to join the instructional design working group? Uh, I think Olga is here to twist his arm. Ah, uh, okay, excellent. <laughs> uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, John Mark, um, we've had a chance to connect with Vincent, and I'm looking forward to getting to talk more with Robert. And there's a lot of excitement. This is really good, and it's perfect timing. Fantastic. Okay, okay. So if everyone's clear on kind of the general purpose and the uh, uh, progression and uh, the setup, now we can move into you know, kind of describing what the working groups currently are, their current status, and which ones we're looking to, to launch in this initial round. Um, right now, there are four that are actively being produced. There's one other that I'd like to launch uh, in the near future. Uh, more on that later. Um, why don't we just start at the top, uh, and we can talk about um, governance um, and creating a governing body for uh, Primarily, you know, as we move um, some projects into the OpenEdX uh, organization on GitHub, uh, what it means, um, the idea here is to facilitate uh, more developer collaboration, um, getting more projects that are moving faster, more innovative, uh, with a lighter touch from edX, but also, you know, on board with kind of the edX mission uh, and our direction. So. Basically, we're trying to have it the best of both worlds, the fast-paced innovation, but also um, something that is aligned with the edX core mission and what we'd like to accomplish with OpenEdX. Uh, one of the features here is that 
if you have a project that we approve uh, and it's working well, it, it's it's up to each project to define kind of the um, the release process uh, as well as the review process and uh, who the code committers are and all that stuff. Um, there's kind of an initial group of people that um, will be getting together next week on a call. If you if you want to join that, it is on the community calendar, and I can share a link. Uh, but, uh, I can share a link for the community calendar with you uh, later if you want to be part of it. And actually, all of these uh, meetings that are taking place are going to be on the community calendar. But um, but between me and a couple of other edX people, I think Ned is included, uh, as well as uh, some of the usuals like uh, Braden and uh, Nate Ani, um, Peter Pinch, I think, is going to be involved, and a few others. We're going to look at creating kind of a plan going forward for how we handle you know, the governance, both for these new projects that are coming online, um, as well as kind of how do we handle working groups. And I would like to have a governing body that oversees working groups and kind of all the other stuff, all the other mechanics that are taking place that we can make sure that they're collaborative, they're transparent, and that they're working towards kind of the, the shared goals that, that we all have. Um, any thoughts on that before we go to the, the next one? Everyone's being very, very quiet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is uh, this is some major groundbreaking stuff. I, I was hoping uh, people would be uh, 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 at least at least conversational, if not confrontational. So we'll. <laughs> oh, um, so okay, so I'll chime in. Oh, um, excellent! I'm one, one, yes. one, one good to, to start blathering. Um, I think it's all exciting, um, and I really want to make forward progress with the analytics working group. Yes. Um, Laurent David and I have uh, been talking a little bit. He has uh, um, has some plans to work on UI stuff over the summer, um, and I have a, a, a different topics, and I need to narrow down on one thing to focus on uh, for the summer. Um, I've been mostly quiet. Is that I'm uh, since going to the PyCon, going to PyCon, I've been at over capacity so it's like I'm suffering from my brain is full okay from over I mean and not this but just overall kind of everything so I'm just quiet because I've just got a lot that I'm chewing over okay let, let us know how we can help you and what you know what you need from us to to really see this through I know a lot of people are going to be very interested in the you know the end product that comes out of the this working group so I think uh you know, just let us know, you know, what we can do resource-wise to, to aid uh, your further development. I, I appreciate it. Um, I just, part of it also in the My Brain is Full has been traveling and am so now heading back to Boston uh, basically right after uh, this, this meetup. And so then I will have, um, after I take care of some other obligations um, and planning out, you know, what is it that I'm going to do? So really, it's more of me doing time management and carving out time. Yeah, okay, fantastic. Um, yeah, the, the next thing is I'd like to see from you kind of like a, a meeting cadence and kind of like, a, you know, let's get the leadership team together and, and figure out what we want to do next. Yeah, so I guess uh, to, to kind of then just toss this in there is, is having somebody from uh, edX, uh, because it is Laurent and, and, and me, yeah. uh, but having a, a third person in there to um, help motivate to move things along, um, yeah. just because that will help. Otherwise, you know, er, er, there's everything that's screaming for attention. Yep, no, I get it. Um, okay, I will figure out who we can tab as kind of a, the edX representative in that group and how we can, uh, how we can help uh, move things forward. Awesome. Thank you. Great. So uh, I'm just going to jump in there. Uh, John, John Mark, um, I have been a point of contact. Maybe there is some desire to have somebody who's a little more technical or something, uh, but I am happy to continue to be the point of contact for analytics. If that is what we need to move that forward. The analytics working group is near and dear to my heart, so I, I do want to make sure we're not blocked. However, any other edX folks, especially those who are more technical, would be very welcome. Okay. Thanks, Olga. Yeah, my, my big con constraint is is really is time availability. 
um, the desire is there. Um, <laughs> and just, just going through and assessing like everything that I've kind of obligated or been obligated to do and figuring it out. <laughs> And I'm going to just upvote the analytics uh, working group here. We've heard a lot from the open source community about the need for analytics. So participating, contributing, and making sure that um, folks uh, like John and Lauren are not by themselves on this is one way to help move the community forward. And I will make myself uh, available to try to assist this as possible, but it's hard uh, for edX to know what the community challenges are around analytics. So it's important to participate in this group to make sure that we have a path forward. Thank you, Olga. So what I'll do is I'll make a note here uh, to get, uh, um, I guess you until, until unless you find somebody else, um, Laurent and me to uh, get together and just have a, a quick uh, chat session um, uh, just to start to see wh wh what is it that we need to do next in order to um, uh, kind of get in, you know, what are the community needs and, and like what are the urgent community needs now? Okay, thanks. And I did have actually a quick organizational question here to either Ned or John Mark. If we, for example, are talking, does that meeting have to be public? Like how stringent are the public requirements? Uh, yes, you must, uh, you must comply with the Massachusetts uh, open meeting. No, I'm, I'm joking. Um, <laughs> uh, I mean, there, there are official meetings and they're kind of like sidebars. I mean, if it's a sidebar, you just want to have like a, a discussion with someone that doesn't need to be public, but for a kind of quote unquote official and, and see the air quotes around that uh, meeting that would need to be public and, you know, people would need to be able to participate in it. So. Okay. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks. It's simple enough. We can post, uh, I'll read what the open rules are, but just as long as we're posting that, Hey, we're having this meetup. Here's the, the, uh, the meet or the zoom. Uh, link um, and you're all welcome to join. Great, thank you. Okay, um, anything else about analytics before we go forward? Okay, um, so next up is the pedagogy and this instructional design uh, working group, which is near and dear to my heart and to me is the most exciting thing we're gonna be doing this year. Um, so, uh, Oh, good. You want to take a spin at describing what this is about? Uh, thanks. Uh, so everyone on this call, I tried to introduce myself last time. Uh, my name is Olga. Uh, in case there are any new people, I uh, work here at edX. I've been here for five to seven years. The numbers <laughs> get fuzzy. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> You're on the analytics working group. And I don't know how many years you've worked here. It's, it's fuzzy math. Yeah, fuzzy it math. Has, it All right, good. The information. <clears throat> I'm encouraged. Math. This is going to be great. Go. <laughs> it's so long that people don't even remember a time when I wasn't here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Okay. Go ahead. Um, so one of the reasons I joined edX, and one of the reasons many, both open source community members and partners um, have joined uh, this open the open edX community is to drive education forward and we're great at delivering code we're great at delivering features I want to I, I think we all should have a shared goal in trying to make sure that the ed education pedagogy and learner experience matches our zeal so the goal of this working group is to work collaboratively together to really get at the root of why we're all here which is to improve education and access to education to everyone everywhere. And as part of that, I hope we can work together to talk about pedagogy, gather best practices across the thousand plus open source uh, installations, um, share those case studies, and come up with shared best practices techniques that we could all leverage. It's does that match your vision, John Mark, as well? Absolutely. Um, so I know that there are a number of instructional designers that have been out and about in the um, OpenEx community. So I welcome their uh, participation and involvement. And I, I look forward to creating a, a leadership team around this working group uh, so that we can get started 
and start making recommendations about the best way to you know work together moving forward. Um, certain ideas bandied about could have to do with like uh, you know communication channels um, on the uh, web forum uh, that we're that we're creating. Uh, other potential items include like an open edX instance. Um, there's there's a lot that we could do, but the, the question is how do we structure it so we can actually tackle some things um, and and make progress. So. Uh, so most immediately in the next week or two, um, I'll be working together a list of folks who are interested in the working group. Um, anyone who's interested, please just send me over your information, either via Slack or by email. I am Olga, O-L-G-A, at edX.org. Um, and please find a way to get in touch and send over or just comment on this wiki page and say that you're interested and we'll try to wrangle all that together and get us on a path forward. Okay, um, I will be out of country for two weeks. However, I hope I will not be out of internet. <laughs> so we will try to do this in a globally distributed fashion. Fantastic. The only, the only way to fly. Um, exactly. Cool. Thank you. Thank you, Olga. I uh, really appreciate your tackling this. Any, um, any other thoughts, pointers, questions? Any ideas from people about what they would like that working group to produce? That is that is the ultimate question. That's something that we will definitely need to get together and uh, actually make plans for. I mean, at the end of the day, if, if all we end up doing is creating a place to share best practices and teach people how to, you know, do instructional design in OpenEdX, that's a win. Uh, the question is, you know, what's the best way to actually accomplish that? Okay. And then uh, very, the next challenge is adding a uh, transverse sort of view of, you know, participant on how the uh, participant work on different course so that we can mm -hmm. follow, of course, a participant on a program or a set of related courses. Mm -hmm. That's where uh, we, we should look at uh, how we can do this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Great. Um, all right, thanks everybody. So moving right along, I think we're down to APIs. APIs. Yeah. Um, yeah, what would you like to say? One second, let me just make a note here. Okay, sorry. So APIs, um, I'm very interested in improving our architectural stance with regard to APIs and from there improving the ecosystem of APIs that are available on the OpenEdX platform. Um, I think that it is strong APIs will make for a strong ecosystem of extensions without requiring contribution. Um, we all feel a bit like contribution is a bottleneck for a variety of reasons and if we can make APIs that will do an end run around a contribution process, um, then people can extend OpenEdX in interesting ways. So I would like to get started on improving our fundamentals for APIs, things like our common guidelines and culture around APIs so that developers can make things that look like they came from the same place without having to reinvent the wheel each time, um, common tools that can save them time in building APIs, um, and then actually building out uh, the APIs themselves. Wrapped up in all that is good tooling to have good documentation on APIs, making sure we have the documentation for the APIs and so on and so forth. So all of that, um, there's this on the screen now, John Mark has put the API architecture landscape note um, that I um, wrote, um, for just sort of a brainstorm of ideas of things that could be pushed forward. Um, the, uh, the, the goal of the working group would be to flesh out this list, prioritize this list, find people who are interested in making progress on items on this list, and then getting them across the finish line. Excellent. That sounds like a worthy goal. Great. Any, um, any questions for Ned? 
I know I know API is a is a big squishy word that can cover lots of things. And I've, I've tried on this page to indicate things that are both within that scope and outside that scope. Um, but there's probably there's probably things that haven't been mentioned here yet, and so it isn't clear whether they're in or out. So we need to we need to add to this page. Cool. Maybe one question uh, related. Um, this is Xavier, by the way. Uh, yeah, you can see me here. Uh, related to the APIs. Um, so you, you mentioned the link between uh, improving the API currently in, in OpenEdX and ex extending the, the platform. So uh, that that's definitely like a, a link that that's important. Um, obviously from one day to the next all the apis are not going to be there uh, and even the discussions to agree on what the right api should be at which place and etc is, is going to to be something a little bit complex if the story is uh, tells anything so one con concrete uh, uh, question for for us when when we do for example current contributions we do it most of the time in the main platform moving it to extensions that means that um, it's good on one side because we don't uh, alter the, the, the main platform for for things that are too specific but it still means that we will be dependent on the apis uh, and their stability and etc that we'll be using so in most cases especially at the beginning it will be looking to extend things which don't have api so we'll one of the goals of this uh, uh, of this working group be to define a path in those cases. Like I want to do a contribution. I don't want to map put everything in the core. Or can I add or build or get to an agreement to the APIs that I need to be able to do it and, and contribute those, of course. Right. Yeah. Part of part of the <clears throat> part of the improved API culture will be to have. The framework for deciding what makes a good API in this world, what sorts of guarantees does an API implementer have to make, um, what, what categories of APIs are there. We already, we, we already are kicking around a, a sort of three bucket categorization system where there, may, there are APIs which are explicitly designed to be short term to support one feature and therefore aren't going to be supported necessarily long term versus APIs which are designed as a product in and of themselves with long-term guarantees of support and general purpose use. And having that kind of understanding and thoughtfulness when you design an API, ideally everything would be long-term support from the user of the API standpoint. But if we're going to make an API that isn't going to be long-term supported, it's good to know that we are doing that and be, have a way to explicitly state that that is what we are doing. So we want to be mindful about that, um, which, um, to get back to your question, what that leads into is that we will, the, the goal is to have a well understood culture of what it means to build an API so that if someone outside wants to make an API so that they can then use that API, we'll have clearly defined pathways for them to do that. Right? We understand that that is one of the implementation strategies that will happen. It's not going to be that edX builds all the APIs and everyone else uses all the APIs. We know that you are all in the positions of knowing what extensions are needed, almost by definition. We don't need to build extensions, we're building the inside. You are all on the outside trying to make it be different than what we made it be. So you know where the extensions have to be. So you've got a better sense of what the APIs have to be. And so if the time comes where you wanna build a feature and you know it would be great to have it be built on an API that doesn't exist, you're in a perfect position to propose the API and even implement the API. So yes, we expect that that will happen. I think that was a long-winded way of saying yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but it's good. I, I like to, to have the, the details, it makes sense. And, and actually maybe a subsidiary question, I don't want to take too much time, so tell me if I, if I should keep that for the API group discussions. But um, will there be also, like you mentioned that currently edX is the one uh, doing the, 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 the core and the extension is done outside. Is there a willingness also within uh, edX to also be using this approach of having a core that is maybe not everything that what edX wants, but also being able to like separate from the, the core and the extensions there too? Yes, absolutely. And 
I mean, I, I say that we're building the core. I mean, the fact is that edX platform, as large as it is, is not the only code that edX builds. And there's all sorts of separate services that are built on top of APIs that are in edX platform. So I think even for our own internal processes, we would be better off if we took a more API and then feature approach to building features. Um, it'll take a little bit of culture to shift to make that happen because of course that might be a longer path to first shipment than just build the feature is. But we are trying to be disciplined in our engineering and understand that that will likely lead to quicker iterations in the long run, even if it take, makes the first iteration take a little bit longer. So, All right. And, and Sounds great. And, and just to answer a question that may be in other people's minds, I didn't mean to imply in that description that um, external contributors are forbidden from change. <laughs> so we, we know that that will still be necessary and we are still open to that happening. We're just hoping to get to a place where it is less necessary and everyone is happier because of it. Yep, that makes sense. Great. For those of you following the Women's World Cup, uh, Australia has just taken a one-goal lead against Brazil. So, you know, just... Oh, sorry, sorry I wasn't paying attention. I was distracted by this meeting. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, cool. So, thank you, Ned. Uh, that's, that's great. The, the only... Um, well, there's one other working group, which is kind of in the formative stages. It's what I'm calling the Build Test Release Working Group. And the purpose of that will be to uh, create a testing infrastructure, a community testing infrastructure for OpenEdX, um, to create kind of a, a continuous uh, integration, continuous uh, deployment pipeline, and to uh, define OpenEdX releases. So if you have been looking for a place to put your release management skills uh, or, or software testing skills, this would be a great avenue for you. Uh, look for more information on that in the near future. We're gonna have kind of an initial uh, group meeting, uh, I think, uh, next week. So anyway, um, so that's that. Uh, anything else about working groups before we move along to, to anything else? I had a quick logistics question. Yeah. I'm gonna uh, list some interested folks in, um, for example, the instructional design working group at the bottom of the instructional design wiki page. Yeah. Not do that. I'm sorry. Is there any reason to not do that? I was just going to add them in. If 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 they've if they've indicated their interest, yeah. I mean, the important thing is that these are people that have actually said yes. Like, yeah. I don't want to I don't want to draft people. I don't want to have people find out because we put their name there. <laughs> right. Several people from this call just messaged me, and I'm just going to add you guys to the wiki page. Cool. Um, oh, I, I will only give people that have opted in and given in this consent. Yes. Uh, I have a question. Does the adaptive learning uh, working group still exist? or? Does I'm sorry, what? Does the adaptive learning working group still exist? I, I don't know. Uh, that's an open question. Um, I it's something that I hope we can get started again, but at this point, it's just not known. Um, they they got together once or twice in the past year. I'll have to find out from Namisha. Unfortunately, Namisha's on vacation, so I haven't been able to talk to her uh, for a few days. Uh, but when I am able to get in touch with her again, um, I'll be able to get a definitive answer about what the plans are for that group. Okay. Thanks. Sure. Great. Um, anything else? Um, just to triple check, if a person is interested in a working group, how do they, after this meeting, voice their interest? Ah, they can add their name to it. Um, they can reach out to us on Slack uh, in one of the Slack channels. Uh, this is why it's actually it's important that we list contact information for each of these working groups so that people know how to get in touch with the you know the leadership team uh, for all the working groups. So. Um, if you have a working group, fill out the contact materials so they know where to go. Uh, but they are, they're welcome to indicate their interest on the wiki page or in Slack. Um, and once we get the web forum up, they can do it there too. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Um, okay. So I, I look forward to, I think this is a great development to look forward to seeing uh, all the things that uh, we're able to produce as a result. Um, now we'll go into a couple of other updates I wanted to make before we uh, before we break. Um, 
there's a, a large initiative called the Ball of Mud Initiative, which is basically to uh, to make OpenEdX not a ball of mud, <laughs> as uh, Namisha likes to put it. Um, like I said, Namisha's been on vacation, so I don't know if there's anyone here that can give us an update on that. Um, I don't know, Ned, if you want to take it. Yeah, go ahead, Ned. I can. So, um, yeah, so we are calling it the Bomb Squad, Ball of Mud Squad. Um, um, what, so my work, my, a little, sorry. My work on the API working group is kind of falling under that umbrella as a way of combating the monolith <coughs> by having better APIs. Um, I've been doing some technical uh, work trying to get better API docs tooling in place. Um, Vanille has been doing work on pushing us towards Python 3 um, support, which has involved a lot of work on getting us to conform to OAP 18, which is the document that describes how best to handle upgrading Python packages in an automated way. Um, so there's been a lot of sort of nitty gritty, not that interesting tactical work just to make the software, get it all sort of on the same track towards the future um, right now. That's, that's where it is right now. Um, Dave Ormsby has been working on block store, which I think falls under that sort of same umbrella as well of taking a significant feature of, the platform storing courses and having it be in a separate uh, service. Cool. Okay. Great. Thank you. Um, Inker. Uh, can anyone? I don't know if Jeremy's around or not. Um, Inker has been one of the most successful kind of mini projects we've ever run. I'm extremely excited about the prospect of taking what we've learned from Inker and applying it. Um, across other areas of OpenEdX. Uh, I don't know what the final tally is, but I know that a substantial number of Inker tickets have been addressed and taken care of and merged in. So it's been, uh, I, frankly, an amazing experience. Um, I don't know if Dave or Ned or either of you want to talk about Inker uh, or? Well, yeah, I can give a little bit of an update. So it, it continues. Um, I think the pace has slowed a little bit, um, but one of the things Spinil did was finish the automation to um, create an anchor ticket for every bit of um, Python 3 futurized work that had to be done in edX platform. So all of sort of the anchor pipeline is full for edX platform getting to Python 3, which is cool because it means we can sort of see how we're getting down to that deadline. Um, cool. Other than that, people still, people are still, Contributing, um, Ali, our summer intern, <laughs> Ali started off by doing an intro ticket, which was good, yes. um, and now is on to more substantial work. Um, one of the reasons we were interested in Inker was that it would be a good way to onboard developers, and uh, that, that seems to be working out. You know, it's a good way to get your feet wet by focusing on the logistics of making a contribution first, and then being able to think about the, the code that you want to contribute in the next time. It is working out. That's like one of the greatest ideas since I started working on OpenEdX. So like, it sounds small, it sounds like basic, but like, I think it's really amazing. Yeah, it's, it's been very good. Thanks, Omar. That's good to hear. Um, excellent. OK. And then finally, last but not least, if anyone has a demo or something you want to show off, uh, something new, something exciting, or even just clever, uh, now's the time to do it. You have the floor. Anyone, anyone at all. Okay, so not this time, but in Yeah, one sec, I, I think I have something. Oh, hey, okay. all right. Okay, it's, it's an old trick that I have been using since the Vagrant days. Um, I just like it because, um, let me share my screen, please. Yeah. Um, Okay, so that's um, yeah, that's so. As you can, you guys see the terminal and just the terminal? Yeah, yeah. just okay, the terminal. Awesome. awesome. All right. So um, this is a tool. It's it's a bash like a shell um, command line shortcut that I use. So I'm I'm currently on my machine. I don't I I'm not logged in. I'm sorry. I'm not inside the. Docker dev stack. 
So just a background, this is um, the Docker dev stack, which is what we use for um, developing op on, on open edX. That's how we make features with bugs, and that's the rest of the community, um, what everyone, every engineer pretty much does. So um, it, it's common that, that in order to run some test command, let's say, I have to go to open another tab, go to the dev stack, make LMS shell, and because I'm on Linux, I have to type my password, password, and then do this. Like, for example, I just wanted to do LS. Um, what I usually do, I wrote a bash shortcut that's also open source, um, but it's, I don't think anyone else uses it. So what, what I would do instead, I would say edX app LS. So it, this command runs from within my, my, um, my edX app Docker instance or like container, whatever it is. So let's test it a bit. LS is not meaningful. Let's say who is, sorry, who? Oh, no, 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 sorry. Who, who am I? Okay, because I'm not sure who am I. So it says you're Omar. If we say add accept, just say your roots. Yep, that's, that's, that's exactly it. Um, it helps me a lot to write in a single bash and I don't have to jump between shells and, and, and Linux, um, like, um, contexts and, and I have a single bash history and that's the most important feature of it. So when I say control R, pi test, as you can see, or maybe I just want to pull a translation. I just say edX app um, paver. As you can see, I can pull translation from within my machine. I just don't remember when was the last time that I had to log in into that shell, which is um, frankly relieving for me. It's, it's a time saver. Wow. Um, so, I'll share. so it basically runs bash commands from within whatever the environment you're using to run. Open yeah. So. Yeah, whatever you put after the XF tool or inside the the um, the, um, sh the Docker container. So another way to do this is to say Docker, like the longer sorry, Docker exec. Like th th this is yeah. uh, the longer version of it, but you know you have to add some spices here just to make sure codes are getting right. But that's pretty much what it does. I oh, know that. Find it. I was going to say, where is it? <laughs> where is it? Uh, yeah, sure. I'll, I'll post a link um, right away. I'll stop sharing. Um. Omar, are you still there? Uh oh. Do we lose you? <laughs> oh no! Uh oh. <laughs> He's yeah. His the whole demo. We do. We don't get the link. <laughs> that's, that's frustrating. Yeah, that's frustrating. Uh, I'll follow up with Omar uh, afterwards, and we can uh, make sure to get the link. Yeah, his his face is frozen right now, so I'm, yeah. uh, he, he we lost him. Um, okay, we'll <laughs> we'll find out uh, from him how we uh, how we get that going later. All right. Uh, thanks everybody for uh, showing up. Um, it's been really good, and I look forward to seeing uh, what we're going to do next time. Uh, think about anything else you want to demo next time, uh, and hopefully we'll have like uh, all the first meetings for working groups under our belts then, and, and uh, with kind of roadmaps for each. So, otherwise, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, give us the link. Us the link. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll post it right now. Um, so if if you have, like, just was going to ask if anyone has any questions. Apart from having a link. Sorry? I'm going to use that shortcut. Yeah, absolutely. Ah, sure, you're welcome. Too. <laughs> cool. All right. Thanks, everybody. Um, oh. Yeah, until, until next time, until July. Take care. Bye. Oh, thanks, Omar. There we go. Thank you.